I worked 41 years in the coal mines. I have black lung, and it's just unfathomable what these poor coal miners That's right. have to go through in order to get what they have worked for and deserve. At one time, poverty was a temporary condition. You were on a down slope for a minute, but you could bounce back up. We can't bounce back up today. It's permanent. We're not going back to the factory and building cars and trucks like we once did. A job working at McDonald's or the grocery store doesn't pay enough for one person to live. We work a 40-hour work week, still not enough. Living from paycheck to paycheck. Rent is $600 a month. We got water bill, electricity. I do this for my kids, and it, and it hurts. I'm 46 years old. I've lived in poverty here in West Virginia every day of my life, and I'm working. I am working poor with a bachelor's degree. I'm doing the best I can with what I have. We were in the height of mass water shutoffs. This entire neighborhood um, was shut off all at one time. I saw all my neighbors get shut off right in front of me. It was kind of terrifying. I'm 42 years old, and I'm a cashier at McDonald's. I had lost my house. You're welcome to come inside. There's a lot of people that are living in their cars. You never notice until you're in the same situation. I don't have stuff to give my children. I'm paying all these bills, and they need school clothes and stuff. They be asking me for I can't give them. Now I'm a Kansas farmer's wife. Kansas farmers are committing suicide. Why? They're usually in debt, up to their eyeballs. I see poverty in my own community. You know, there's a 70% unemployment rate in my in the reservation right now. Here in New York City, we're home to millionaires and billionaires, and we have so many people living in the street, and that's just not right. I've been a homeless veteran twice, uh, lived in a shelter. I've been living down here since I was 17. My only chance of going to college was joining the Army. We are demanding that we stop the war on our poor. 700,000 people in this country are on the verge of losing their food stamps. This budget calls for shrinking the social safety net programs like Medicare. I just know that everything that's happening to us isn't right. I'm in stage five of kidney disease. I fell behind on my health care and they canceled my health insurance and they told me uh, I have to wait until open enrollment. There's only five stages of kidney disease and I'm in the fifth stage. Murder, it's murder, you know, if you ask me, it's murder. I lost a son to gun violence. And I lost a daughter. No parents should have, in America, should have to bury their pet, their child for a lack of medicated expense. I'm willing because my children my God. are no more. you to know that when hands that once picked cotton, join hands of Latino, join hands of progressive whites, join faith hands and labor hands and Asian hands and Native American hands and poor hands and wealthy hands with a conscience and gay hands and straight hands and trans hands and Christian hands and Jewish hands and Muslim hands and Hindu hands and Buddhist hands, when we all get together, we are an instrument of redemption. When we join hands, we can revive and make sure that the promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and equal protection under the law is never taken away from anybody. So I got a question. Are the rejected ready to revive and declare that this land is your land? This land is my land. This land is our land. And together, from the State House 
to the White House, the rejected are going to demand that this nation never give up on being one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As members of the Christian church, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in God's covenant of love, which binds us to God and to one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into newness of life, and are made one with the whole people of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. church is and what church is supposed to be. It is a prophetic ministry meant by Jesus Christ to help all people. I was raised in this church. It's one of the most welcoming, loving, caring, and compassionate churches that I've ever been a part of. This church has grown throughout the years, has always served the public, always done great things for the community. I love being a part of a place that's doing something beyond the walls. For the people in our community. No matter what race, creed, color, it's a loving church. And no matter how much trouble you're in, they are here to help you. You can be transfigured in a sermon. You can be transfigured in a song. You can be transfigured in a praise. You can be transfigured in a prayer that takes you to the place where you see God show enough, show enough, for real, for real, for real. And when you know God and you've been changed from the inside, it'll change how you serve on the outside. And if you understand what it is, then you'll understand what you're supposed to do with it. Though the decades march on, the dream lives. We are here, assembled for hope. Courage and commitment, continued by torchbearers like Greenleaf Christian Church in Goldsboro, building up the Goldsboro community. They're located here on this corner, but they reach so much further than that. It's dealing with the community as a whole. It's not excluding anybody. We are about those that have less than, that are disenfranchised, that have no hope. And coming here, we have a pastor, a shepherd, the angel of this house, who gives us the Word of God, and we live it out. Reverend Dr. Barber is the chairperson of the Rebuilding Broken Places Community Development Corporation. The facility provides on-site job training, child care and meals for children, and tutoring. The corporation also offers home buying workshops and built homes for first-time home buyers and low-income families. We are not a in the Four Walls Church, we are in the community church. That works to advance social justice in North Carolina. Hello, Ms. Barbara. We think it's time for legislators to stop being ideologues, Republicans, Democrats, think about these people. I love the teachings of my pastor. I love our Moral Monday. The Moral Monday events demonstrate a classic David versus Goliath struggle. The Reverend taking on a right-leaning state legislature that has introduced an avalanche of extreme policies that hurt students, the poor, and the sick. Somebody's hurting our people, and it's gone on far too long, and we won't be silent anymore. Our brothers
brothers and sisters are sleeping on the streets. For a country this rich to have so many people poor, it's immoral and it's wrong. Our backs are against the wall and we got no choice but to push. Oh, freedom. Oh. pushing this with every candidate because we've heard these consultants say that poor people don't want to be called poor and we're meeting poor people that said that's not what we want we know we're poor we don't like a nation ignoring us and not calling our name why is there not a focus on poverty and low wealth I mean a focus not as an aside not in special committees and, special. and how is or how will your campaign be different in both naming and addressing poverty as a central part of the campaign. I love Green Leaf mostly because Reverend Barber preaches the word of God. All are welcome, all can come in, all are loved, all are embraced, all will be lifted, all are important. And Green Leaf loves you for who you are. They see you through God's eyes. I've raised two children here. And I just feel at home when I'm here. It is about giving, but it's also about learning. Learning the true definition of what Christ's purpose in this world was about. No, America has never yet been all that she has hoped to be. But right here and right now, a third reconstruction is possible if we choose. Please, God, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. The Lord save me. But through coming to Greenleaf and listening to the God within my past and God within my member, I have a defined mission. I know what I am to do with my salvation. Besides just sit there and fast and go to church and Sunday school, I know how to accomplish my assignments. It is a church that loves everybody, a church that welcomes everybody, because we serve a God that's a God of everybody. And I'm just glad to be a part of a place that is so loving and welcoming. This is a good place to raise your children, get foundation in the word. We indeed are living out, being concerned about the total man. Just not about the soul and trying to ensure that they get to heaven, but to ensure that they enjoy part of heaven while we're here on this earth. Thank God for Jesus and being a member of a church that cares about God's people. We love you and we thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Pentecost Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Any worshipers in the house? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Everybody, send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. I said, send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Come on down. I said, send it on down. Send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We can't do right till the Holy Ghost comes. Say, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We can't pray right till the Holy Ghost comes. I say, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We can't love right till the Holy Ghost Come, I said, Lord, let the, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We can't pray right till the Holy Ghost come. I said, Lord, Lord let the Holy Ghost come on down. Well, send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. 
come on. I said, send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost. Listen. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. And then rising, he justified. Freed me forever. One day, he's coming back. Glorious day. Say, living, living, he loved me. Dying, save me. Buried, carried my Rising, arising, he justified. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Glory. Send it on down. Send it on down. I said, Lord, let the Holy Ghost. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let Put those hands together. Come on, everybody, praise the Lord. He's worthy of our praise, worthy of the glory. Come on, help me praise him. Help me give him glory. The old church is saying, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? Tell me, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right, y'all. Right, the Lord is all right. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? He's all right. He's all right. In my soul, he's all right. In my mind, he's all right. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost. I said, send it on down. Send it on down, Lord. Come on. Come on down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. How many of you came this morning? with an expectation. Hallelujah. How many of you came this morning anticipating, needing the Lord to let the Holy Ghost come yes. on down? Ah, you ain't convincing to me. <laughs> that was kind of dry. I didn't say that you come looking to see me. I didn't say that you come looking to see Pastor Barbara. Hallelujah. I said, did you come with an expectation of the Holy Ghost to show up and show out? Hallelujah. I declare unto you, if you come expecting, then God will surely deliver. Yes. And in these times that we live in, we need the Lord to send it on down. Yes. Because we can't pray right. We can't love right. We can't walk or talk right until the Lord sends down his spirit. So this morning we come, I hope, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all yes. ye lands. We come to serve the Lord with gladness. Any glad people in here? You realize that you didn't have to get up this morning? Do you realize that somebody laid down last night and didn't make it to this morning? But the Lord spared your life. Yes. And it was not, let me get the record straight. It won't because you deserved it. It won't because you had everything right. But God gave us one more chance. Yes. To give him glory, honor, and praise. So therefore we come into his presence with singing. We know that the Lord is God. Come on, come on. It's the Lord that made us yes. and not we ourselves. Yes. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pastor. Yes. So we enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes. And we come into his courts with praise. We're thankful unto God. And we bless the Lord's name because the Lord is good. Do you know of anything in anybody that's been any better to you than God? Hallelujah. One songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of oh, Jesus yes. Oh, yes. and all that the Lord has done for me, my very soul cries out. You know, so, sometimes I wonder when I'm amongst some of us 
if the Lord has done anything for us. Because if the Lord has done anything for you, then when you come through the gate, nobody don't have to pump and prime you and prod you to tell God thank you. The psalmist said, I will enter into his gate yes. with thanksgiving and into his courts. I'm going to have some praise yes. because the Lord is good. Yes. Not that I got another request, but when I look back over my life and I see what the Lord has brought me through, how the Lord has kept me. How the Lord has healed me time and time again. How the Lord has been my midnight company keeper. Hey, I don't know about you, but I've had some lonely nights. When I couldn't do nothing but just turn over. Rest in the Lord. And trust that the Lord was there with me. I'm telling you this morning, this morning, this morning, Greeny, my prayer, my desire for you is that you would be a people who would just think of how good God has been. I'm talking, I ain't talking about last year. I'm talking about this morning. Somebody said, I got 10 reasons to tell God thank you. One, he woke me up this morning. Two, he woke me up this morning. Three, he woke me up this morning. I got up the brand new mercies and grace I see. Hey, glory to God. And I don't know about you, but I determined on yesterday before I got here today. That if the Lord would enable me to make my way with all that's going on in this world. If the Lord would allow me to make my way yes. into the house of the Lord, if didn't nobody praise him but me, well, well. <laughs> I was going to give God the praise and glory and honor that's due God's name. And if it's too much for you, I'm like Shirley Caesar this morning. You just hold my mule. Everybody in here this morning got up with a roof over your head. Everybody in here this morning got up with a reasonable portion of your health and strength. Everybody in here this morning woke up clothed in your right mind. How do I know because your blouse ain't on backwards? How do I know because you didn't come in here with a green shoe and an orange shoe? How do I know? Because you got breath in your body. The word of God says let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Because I got breath. I'm going to tell God thank you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You want the Lord to show up? His word said he inhabits the praises of his people. Takes residence in him. You want God to move? Praise him. Not so much for what you want him to do right now, but praise him for what he's already done. See if God won't. <laughs> See if God won't bless you real, real, real good. If we would only but praise him. So this morning we welcome you, Greenleaf. <laughs> because first of all, we welcome the Lord in this place. We welcome God to have free course in here this morning. We know that we come to church and many of us expect to be here from maybe 10, 11, 30, 12 o'clock. But we invite the Lord to do whatever the Lord wants to do this morning. And if that means staying longer than 12 o'clock, then we stay longer than 12 o'clock. And if you got to go, ain't nobody mad at you. <laughs> Just go on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But we welcome all of you who have joined us physically here at Greenlee Christian Church on this Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. We welcome those who are joining us by way of live stream, some 49 states within the United States and many, many countries 
that I dare not even begin to try to call the name. I am telling you, God has blessed us even in the midst of a pandemic. For we have members all over this world. And I'm talking about y'all, they members that sent a little something too. They members that's praying for us too. And we're hoping that by the time we have uh, Friends and Family Day, some will be able to come, and those that won't be able to come, we'll be able to pull them up on the screen at Zoom so we can look in their faces and they can look in ours. We have a lot to be thankful for this morning, and we just welcome you into the house of the Lord. And let us one more time just begin to welcome the Lord here. Gracious God, you're welcome in this place. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We invite you to reign on us, God. Reign on us, oh God, until praise becomes easy. That we have a case of the can't hip it. That you shower down on us in such a way, God. That you roll back our memories and remind us of where you bought us from. And where we could have been. Remind us of the many times that you kept us, Lord, so that we might be able to give your name glory, honor, and praise. We welcome you here this morning into our brokenness. We welcome you here this morning into our mess. <laughs> we welcome you, oh God, because you said if we would open ourselves, you would come in. And so we welcome you this morning. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. God, you're the potter, we're the clay. Mold us and make us, Lord. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your spirit. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire. To abide in the praises of your people. We lift our hearts. As we offer up. Will everybody in the building join us and sing? Welcome. Lord, you welcome. And to this you desire. In the praises of and so we live in surrender, Lord. We welcome you in. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> I might have to cough and I might have to clear my throat, but in between all that, I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. I'm going to lift my hands and surrender and open my heart because I need the Lord like never before. 
This morning, if you are desiring to sow into this rich soil, and as we prepare for those who are in sanctuary to bring their offerings, we're doing that now. We ask that whatever usher trustee is going to be handling the offering, if you would come. You see on the screen, and those of you who are watching by, li by way of live stream, you see the ways in which we currently give. We can do so online using PayPal. <clears throat> All you need to do is go to greenleechristiandoc.org backslash donate and you will see a PayPal button. If you click that, you will be able to give your offerings, your gifts electronically. If you don't trust that, we still got good old snail mail. P.O. Box 597, Goldsboro, 27533. And just so you know, we are expanding and trying to open more ways for you to be able to sow. We're moving on up. So if you don't like PayPal, we're going to have push pay. And in the coming days, you're going to hear more about that. And who knows, we might have give a fly or give a fire, whatever it's called before long. But we want you to be able to sow into the kingdom. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these gifts and these offerings that will come on today. Whether they come electronically or for our people who are coming by the table to sow. Remind us, O oh Lord, that we are giving unto you. We're giving for kingdom purposes. And we ask, O oh God, that you would bless these seeds and these offerings. That they may be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And the destruction of the adversary's kingdom. We ask all of this in your name, and we believe it done. Amen and amen. Ushers, you want me to say it? No, you, you sound right loud. Go ahead on. Save my voice.
no truer words could have been sung. <laughs> if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. As we uh, prepare to go into morning prayer, I have these um, announcements and pastoral reflections. Uh, our pastor this morning is at Foundry United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C. I think I read that that church has been in existence since the early 1800s. And there was a time when someone black would not have been welcome in the service, much less talking about the being welcome in the pulpit. And so this morning, we just honor God for the many, many ways that God is blessing and the many doors that God is opening. And one of the greatest blessings is that we are not confined so that if God is calling for our pastor to go someplace else, we can't have church here. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has enabled us to be able to continue. Y'all don't act like y'all happy about it, but it's all right in the house. Services there start at 11.15, and so I would imagine that uh, Pastor Barbara is watching us right now. <clears throat> um, we want you to be reminded also that we are just a few days away less than two weeks now from our June 18th, Poor People's, Mass Poor People's and Low Wage Workers Assembly in Washington, D.C. That is co-chaired by our pastor and Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris. There are some of you who are going by way of bus and who will be uh, staying over on Friday night. Our coordinators for that is Sister Tina Powell, Sister uh, Evelyn Paul, and Sister Pat Hokett. Um, if you have not signed up for a room by now, there are no rooms. Sister Tina is shaking her head. There are no rooms. And as it relates to the bus, there are 70 seats, I believe, and most of them, if not all of them, have been taken. I think I'm reading the blinks of the eyes correctly. If you are going on that trip, please, ma'am, please, sirs, make sure that you, we're going to get it to you. I'm going to get it to Sister Tina, and she's going to make sure that you have it, that you fill out an emergency contact sheet. We know it's going to be hot that day unless the Lord intervenes and something happens a different way. We're going to be on Pennsylvania Avenue, and it's on pavement. It's going to be hot out there. And so you need to make sure that if you need your walker with your seat or if you need a chair, make sure you carry it with you. Um, make sure that you list on your sheet who your emergency contact is. We're hoping that nobody gets sick. But if they do, we want to know who to contact to let them know that we can get information, we can get you the care that you need. Um, please make sure you take a penny or two. We're going to try to have some uh, snacks and things, but when they stop, if you want to get something, you need a penny or two to get it. So don't be like you shocked when you get there. Oh, I didn't know I would have to have no money. Because it may be that there's not anybody on the bus that can help you, okay? We're not being, huh? And the hotel that you are staying in, do not have a continental breakfast. So that means that we got to make some arrangements so we can get a bistic or something. So you won't be standing out there without anything. So between now and then, we'll work some things out, but you're going to need a few coins, okay? All right, so <clears throat> that's that. Um, on next Sunday, the Lord willing, we will, our pastor will be back in the pulpit and he will be preaching the Sunday morning message and Greenleaf will experience yet another historical um, event. And I don't say it uh, because it's me, but I say it in deepest humility that on that Sunday, God willing, I will be installed here officially as the executive assistant pastor. 
God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Somebody asked me, well, how is that different than what, you, what you're doing? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it's going down in the history book as executive assistant pastor. And if you know the history of Greenleaf, 130 some years, then you know for a woman, first of all, it's the first real assistant pastor that we have had in our history. And second of all, it's a woman. And if anybody ought to be happy, the sisters ought to be happy. For the doors that have been open, for the next sister that's going to come along. Now you have a, a sister as an executive assistant pastor. Who knows what God has in store for you, Greenleaf? He might be priming you for the senior pastor. To be a female, we just don't know. We just don't know. But we know God knows what God is doing. And this comes on the heels of last Sunday when we had our first official minister of music installed. Minister of Music and Christian Arts, Elder Ronzel Bell, who has been with us faithfully, Greenleaf, for four years. And he has poured into this place, spiritually, financially, physically, and we give God praise and thanksgiving for him. On last Sunday when he was here, he told me, when he got to the hospital to visit his mom, and I hope that this does not up, get him uh, upset, but uh, he told me that he told his mama that mama said they installed me today at Greenleaf as the minister of music and Christian arts. And his mom replied, that's good, baby. I'm so proud of you. And then not many days after, she went on to be with the Lord. And so on this Wednesday, June the 8th, we will be having here at our church, his church, the home-going celebration of his mother, Sarah Elizabeth Bell Coley. And he wants us to come with praise, to come with rejoicing, that a saint has gone home to be with the Lord. And so while we'll be shedding tears, there'll be some tears of joy mixed up in that, and we continue to pray for his family. I think that's all. Oh, this morning, I don't know if anybody who is present in sanctuary or if there's somebody who is listening by way of live stream who knows of someone this would be applicable to. But on this past Sunday, sometime, somebody left their hearing aid. And you may be wondering where it is. If that is you or somebody that you know, please contact the church. Um, you can, if you're here today, you can contact one of the ushers and they will see that you are reunited with your hearing aid. Uh, and if you're not here, if you'll just contact us, we'll do our best to be in place so you can retrieve that. I'm almost certain that if you had it, you need it. And so we're glad that we were able to find it and hold on to it for you. All right. I think that is all that I have by way of announcements. And so we're going to take a moment for some praying space. It's a lot to pray about this morning, y'all. It's a lot to pray about. It was about two or three weeks ago, all of our eyes as we heard the news was cast toward Durham. Every time you turn around, there was a shooting or something that happened in Durham. Well, it's happening here in Goldsboro. It's another reason why we have to be about our father's business and that we have to be active not just simply praying words, but putting our feet in our hands with those words. Just the other day, I think Saturday morning, I woke up to the news that said there was a shooting. I'm not sure that the 16-year-old died or was just injured, but 5 o'clock in the afternoon, here he died. 
here on uh, at George and Pearson Street here in Goldsboro. What street? Fussell. Okay. All right. George and Fussell Street. That was five o'clock shooting. We woke up to find that a 14 and a 12 year old were killed in a car accident, 2.30 in the morning. We don't stand in a place of any kind of judgment because we don't know the circumstances that surrounded that. But it just made me think that I have a 12 year old granddaughter and I can't imagine her being out of the house at 2.30 in the morning. But I got enough sense to know that if you sleep, you don't really know what they're doing. And so it is a praying time. Gun violence is running rampant everywhere. I'm sure those that went to the grocery store in Buffalo, New York, had no idea gun violence would be on the rise. Those who were at the hospital, when someone in great pain that felt like they were not done just, they came in and just shot the doctor and another doctor and other souls were lost. Those babies in Uvalde, that as more and more of that story unfolds, it becomes more and more bizarre and more and more hurtful. Saints of God, it's a praying time. It's a praying time. It's out there now, but we don't know when it's going to come close to home. So we have to pray one for another. I ask your sincere prayers for our pastor, for those who are traveling with him, for those who will show up on Pennsylvania Avenue on Saturday the 18th. This world is in a mess. And we just don't know what kind of twisted minds might be out there. But we know that God has a garrison of angels that he can dispatch to watch over and take care of us and defend us in times such as these. And so this morning as we are preparing to come for prayer, we remember those who are on our recovery list. Sister Ola Deloach. Evangelist Mary Barnes, Brother Larry Lofton, Brother Hilton Patrick, Deacon Emeritus James Harris, Deacon Roger Wilson, Sister Gloria Howard, Mother Della McCullough, who is in the hospital. My understanding is that she is coming along. Brother Hilton Patrick is also in the hospital and Sister Marva uh, request your prayers. We pray not only for those who are struggling with sickness, but we pray for their caregivers. We pray for their caregivers because when you see someone that you love going through, it takes a toll on you. And so we are praying for those. This morning as we are preparing to go into prayer, if there are others whose names you might know that I don't know. Will you lift them? Praying for other uh, bereaved families such as the Patterson family, the Falk family. Anybody who would like to come to the altars as pastor has uh, been allowing us to come COVID safe to the altar. If you got something this morning that's pressing on your heart, that right where you're sitting is not altar enough, that you just want to come, kneel at the altar, stand at the altar, whatever you would desire to, to do, we invite you to do so at this time. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Be not, O oh, gentle, oh, here, my humble cry, oh, I. Thou 
are calling oh do don't pass me by I'm calling you oh say oh yeah Hear my humble, humble cry. Oh, why? While on others, thou art calling, Savior, do. Don't pass me by. Gracious and kind. Sweet and loving Jesus, God our Father and our Mother, it's to you that we come this morning, standing in need of you. We come crying out to you, Lord, asking you not to pass us by. The truth of the matter, Lord, is if we were to spend the rest of the morning, the rest of the day praying, we could not cover all the things that need to be lifted before you. But we're so glad that you are an all-knowing God, an ever-present God, and an all-powerful God. There's nothing that is impossible for you, nothing too great for you, nothing that is out of your line of vision. We're grateful for that this morning, Lord. This morning, Lord, a few of your children have gathered in this branch of Greenleaf physically. This branch of Zion and others have gathered by way of live stream, sitting at their computers or sitting by their phones listening, Lord. We come confessing that we need you, Lord, like never before. Every day, God, there's something that troubles us. Every day, Lord, there's something that drives us to our knees and causes us to lift our eyes to the hills from which comes all of our help. We know, Lord, that without you, we can't make it. This morning, Lord, we come lifting before you the people of Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, O oh Lord. We come lifting the parents and loved ones of 10-year-olds that ought to be thinking about what they're going to do this summer. Playing with doll babies and going swimming and going to the park and playing with their siblings and experiencing their mothers and fathers and loved ones' hugs. But instead, their parents are preparing and have already buried some of them. God, we ask you to have mercy this morning. God, this world is in need of you. And we come this morning standing on your promise that if we, your people, that are called by your name, would simply humble ourselves, turn from our evil ways, and seek your face, you promised us that you would heal our land. God, our land needs healing. Our land needs healing environmentally. As we're having torrential rains and strong winds that are tearing things up, coming at unexpected times, hitting sometimes the same place where people are, are already suffering and struggling, God. We don't understand the whys of what you have allowed. But we still know, God, that you're able. We come this morning lifting our city, Goldsboro. Gun violence. Young people trying to outrun the police. Growing up too fast. In situations that we would not even imagine. And God, while we don't come with judgment, we ask you, oh God, to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds that we might see 
these young people. Give us a strategy and a plan to help them, God. Let us be willing to do it, Lord. Bless in our schools, God. Bless teachers everywhere that they might see their students and see it more than just a job. God, as the COVID cases are rising, help us to be cautious. Help us, Lord, to not be so fearful that we're not able to move about, but help us to take the necessary precautions. If we have fear of getting vaccinations, God, we ask you to clear up those fears. If, God, we just are determined that this thing is not real, help us to wear the mask just to help our sisters and brothers who believe that it is. God, we ask this morning that you would remember those on our recovery list. Sister Annie Duke says she's caring for her mother, Mother Della McCullough. Evangelist Mary Barnes and Sister Ola DeLocha, she's healing. Brother Hilton Patrick and Sister Marva as she's caring for him. We know, oh God, that there is nothing too difficult for you. And so God, while we may not be able to name the illnesses, we know that you already know. And we trust you, oh God, for the healing that only you can do. God, we pray this morning for those bereaved families and especially for the family this morning of our beloved Elder Bell. We pray that you would strengthen and comfort them right now. That you would be with them these days and in the days ahead. We know, God, that earth knows no sorrow that you can't heal. We know, God, that there is a comfort that comes from you that allows us to comfort others. Grant us that comfort, Lord. Those of us who have been there, help us to reach out and to hold them up in prayer. We thank you for it today. And God, as we prepare to close this prayer, we pray special blessings upon the Barber family. We pray, oh God, for Sister Rebecca, who has given her husband to stand for the least of these, for the world, to put his life on the line, and in so doing, hers is also on the line. We pray, oh God, that you would love on her, that you would hold her close. We pray for each of the Barbara children. We pray for Dr. Sherelle. We pray for Attorney William. We pray for Rebe and Rebecca and for Ben, and we pray for Andrew. God, we pray that you will encourage their hearts. Where they don't understand, God, and things get heavy and fear would want to creep in, God, we pray that you would comfort them as only you can. Help us here at Greenleaf to be supportive, not stiff-necked and rebellious, that you might continue to let your blessings rain on us. We ask all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus. And anything that we have forgotten, we know, Lord, that you know. We say, handle it, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as only you can. Amen and amen. Amen.
worshipers that's all give me just about two or three worshipers that, that will just worship the Lord I can make it through this I can worship my way through this I can worship my way through it God you're worthy God you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy hallelujah hallelujah say hallelujah salvation salvation and glory the Lord for the Lord our God is great for the Lord our God is almighty the Lord our God the Lord our God is for the Lord he's wonderful he is one Has God been good to anybody? Ah, uh, come on. You brought me through this. Yes. You brought me through that. And Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. Brought me through that. Lord, I'm grateful. Hey, you made a way out of no way. Yes, you did. So, Lord, I. you did for me you opened doors when they were closed in my face Lord I'm grateful yes I am to you you brought me through this God yes you did oh you brought me through that you brought Say, I ain't so grateful. I'm so grateful, yeah. I'm so grateful. I am so grateful. Do 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 You brought me through this. Yes, Lord, you brought me through that. And Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Keep it moving. I 
feel something else. Listen, I am so glad. Uh, trouble don't last always. brought me through this mm -hmm. and he brought me through that and I just want the Lord to know that I know who did it yes Lord I'm grateful I'm grateful to you hallelujah we thank God for the ministry of music here at Greenleaf and for Elder Bell if you will turn in your Bibles this morning I'm going to go to three different texts, but they are close together and they are related one to the other. We're going to be in Luke. And since it is the custom of this house to stand during the reading of the Gospels, I'm going to ask if you will remain standing this morning for the passages that will be read from the book of Acts, if you are able. Luke 24, it's the last chapter in the book of Luke, verses 48 and 49. Reads as follows. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. But you are to stay in the city, some translations say in Jerusalem, 
until you are clothed with power from on high. King James says, until you are endued with power from on high. Then Acts chapter 1, it's over to your right a little bit. Verse 8. I hear pages turning. You got it? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, King James said the Holy Ghost, has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Some translations say to the uttermost, uttermost parts of the earth. And then if you'll turn to Acts chapter 2 and indulge me for 12 verses out of <clears throat> that chapter. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. You would think if they heard them speak in their own language, there wouldn't be any confusion, wouldn't you? Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Paphila, Egypt and parts of Libya adjoining Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? And so for this time, as you are being seated, that is allotted to me. I want to use for a thought this morning. Got power? So what? And now what? Got power? So what? And now what? Gracious God, as you have been with us in our moments of preparation, we ask now, Lord, that you would rest upon us in these moments of proclamation. Holy Spirit, come with an anointing that makes preaching, teaching easy. Open the hearts and the minds of your people that they might receive what you want them to receive out of this word. Hide me behind the cross that what they see is not me, but more of you and less of me. It's in your name that we pray. Amen and amen. Today, Christian churches all over the world are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Preach, preach. So as not to assume that everyone who is among us knows the meaning of Pentecost. For those of you who do know, I ask that you would indulge me for just a moment as I share some background information. Originally in the Hebrew Bible, Pentecost was the annual harvest festival that occurred seven weeks after the Passover. In Christianity, Pentecost is important in the church's liturgical calendar because it marks the birthday of the church. 
it was the church's first birthday party. And what a party it was. You know, somebody said, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. It was the time when God chose to pour out the Holy Spirit upon the Jerusalem church at the first Pentecost after Christ's resurrection. The word Pentecost means 50. It is the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit that was to come 50 days after Jesus' resurrection and 10 days after his ascension. This gift was inclusive and it was unconditional. I want you to remember those two words, inclusive and unconditional. According to Leviticus 23 verses 15 to 21, the Israelites were instructed to hold an annually one day harvest festival. Seven weeks or 50 days after the Passover, the festival festival was to be called the Feast of Weeks. Involved in this festival was exclusive sacrifices or extensive sacrifices. The Israelite farmers would start their journey toward Jerusalem, at which time they intended to present their first fruit offerings. When we move into Acts 1 and 8 on the day of Pentecost, the first Pentecost after Jesus' resurrection, the church receives power to be witnesses of Christ Jesus. First of all, in Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem was the place where Jesus was executed. Samaria. Why Samaria? Because it was the place that was regarded as a wasteland of impure half-breeds. And then, then into the ends of the uttermost parts of the earth. Why there? Because that's the place where the Gentiles, who by some Jews were viewed to be nothing and unsuited for the kingdom, that's where they lived. And in case you're wondering who the Gentiles are, it's us. It's us. In Luke 24 and 49, the apostles were instructed to remain there in the city of Jerusalem, in the house where Jesus had presented himself to them one last time and reminded them of the promises. They were to remain in this same place, and they were told soon, not an exact number of days, but soon they would receive the promise. And this promise would be coming down from on high. When the promise came, it was going to clothe them with power. Now, as an aside, this morning when you got up and you put on your clothes, it covered what needed to be covered, didn't it? Somebody said, Lord Jesus. So you understand the terminology of being clothed. It wasn't just a little tap. It wasn't just a little smidgen. They were wrapped up or were going to be wrapped up in power when the Holy Spirit came. This gift was not granted based on merit, something that they should receive because of their human or supernatural achieve, or their spiritual achievement. It was and it still remains a divine gift that comes from above. It is out of the reach, the reach of humanity, meaning that the world didn't give it, the world can't control it, and the world can't take it away. It is the gift from God to the church that empowers her to be Christ's witnesses. This gift is by grace. In order to receive this gift of power, the only things they needed to do was to remain in position. They had to wait, anticipate, and remain there for an unspecified amount of time. That meant that they couldn't be peeping out the window. They couldn't be up pacing. 
They couldn't be like, well, I wonder when, I know what he said, but, you know, we already done been here 40 days since he died, and, you know, he said he was going to go back, and, and he was going to, he was going to say, yeah, he told us that, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when he said that, y'all? Yeah, he said that he was, it was necessary for him to leave because if he didn't go, then he couldn't send the comforter, and we were going to need a comforter to be able to make it. And I believe he was right about that because I don't know about y'all, but I'm scared. Won't, we don't see any recording that any such conversations were going on. If you read the text closely, it says they were sitting, which indicates that they were just patiently waiting. Can you just imagine what the atmosphere in that room must have been like? These 120 people who were sitting in this room didn't have stellar records. Particularly those 11 that remained that was his disciples. Y'all know about them, right? They were the ones that ran and didn't show up. One of them had talked a good game. His name was Peter. He said, you know, I'm your boy. I ain't gonna let nobody get but so close to you and do but so much to you. I got you. Peter was so sure of himself until he pulled a sword, cut off the soldier's ear. But then when things got shown up gritty, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. This thing is getting real now. He forgot what Jesus had told him. Get behind me, Satan, before the cock crows. You're going to deny me three times. Who, me? <laughs> I ain't going to never deny. <laughs> these, other, th these right here? These other 11? <laughs> Don't you count on them, but I'm your ride and live. I'm going down with you like four flat tires. I got you. Then when that time came, we all know what Peter did. Cussed out a little girl. I know y'all ain't hard on Peter. Because y'all know how we are. We get put in a press state. Somebody will look at us and say, didn't I see you at Greenleaf last Sunday with your hands lifted telling God hallelujah? Are you the same person? But this gift, it's a gift of grace. So Peter was just right to receive it. They are promised this as a divine gift. It has a definitive shall in it. And any time that we hear the word shall, we know that without a doubt, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come without condition or omission. It is every believer who is present in the room without exception. Women, children, rich, poor, sick, well, whoever is in that room was given the promise that they would receive the gift of the Spirit. Somebody ought to be set free this morning just by that statement alone. The gift was inclusive and unconditional. Somebody in here this morning has been trying to earn the gift of the Spirit. Let me free you this morning. You can't do it. You can't be good enough to earn it. But don't you allow yourself to no longer receive the gift of the Spirit. Because it is the divine gift given to all who would but believe and remain in the room. It doesn't matter what the person on the pew next to you thinks about your worthiness to receive the gift. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that. You might think I'm not holy enough to have the Holy Spirit abiding in my life, but I got the promise of God based on what took place on the day of Pentecost that this is a divine gift. You can't keep it from me because it's sent down from above. It's out of your reach. <laughs> and it's intended for me. If I can but remain, remain in my messiness. I'm not saying just keep on being messy, but I can come messy and broken with things in my life that ain't up to what you say they ought to be. And God will 
give me his spirit that will empower me to let go of some of those things. Y'all don't act like y'all glad about it, but I sure am. This divine gift would give them power, but let me just back up a moment and talk some about power. As quiet as it's kept, most of us seek power. And when we actually obtain it, we either don't know what we have, <laughs> we don't know how to use it, or we abuse it. I would argue that that is part of the problem that we are seeing in this country today and in this world today. That hunger, that desire for power. Not so that we can be witnesses of love and unity and care, but rather so we can show who has the most influence. So that we can show who has the most authority. Not to do good, but to do harm. All around us we see evidence that this is true. Ukraine and Russia, unjust laws and legislature, unequal education, health care disparities, attempts to exert power over somebody else's body, deciding whether or not women can have birth control or even have abortions for any reason, you going to tell me that I can't have an abortion when my life is at stake. That's using power for the wrong reasons. Who can and cannot vote? The hunger for this type of power has worked its way into the church. We no longer are whosoever will let them come. We are no longer interested in doing what God said through Jesus that we ought do. Well, what's that, Reverend Cheryl? I'm so glad you asked. He said we ought go into the hedges and the highways and compel men and women to come. Instead, we sit up in here in our air condition, <laughs> nice lighting, on cushioned chairs, and we say we have service on every Sunday at 10 a.m., and we welcome you to Greenleaf. I hope somebody will come, but who did you invite? Who did you see in the hedges and the highways? Where the hedges and the highways? The grocery store, the hospital waiting room. Who did you see that you told, come on over here? Yes, Greenleaf is not a perfect church. You're not going to find one. But guess what? I go there, and I can tell you that love dwells in there. Acceptance dwells in there. Well, you might not have the right things to wear, but come on anyway in the house because we'll accept you over there. You might not have the kind of income, but I, it ain't many of us in here that can be talking about no income. Because most of us, we might look like we all that in three bags of chips, but most of us, is singing the third stanza of struggling, the dung, straining. But that's a story for another day. We have become more like country clubs, screening who we want to come into our churches and who can serve in certain positions and who can even lift their hands and worship in God's house. No, we don't go to them and tell them to put their hands down, but you know we got to look. that says, I know you ain't got your hands up. I know you're probably saying I'm middling, so I'm going to go ahead on. This is not a new thing because the writers of the Bible tells us that people have always tried to determine who can be in and who can be out. But from the beginning, it was not God's intention that it would be so. God's kingdom is not supposed to look like the systems and the kingdoms of this world. We are supposed to recognize that we are here by grace and that the power we have is a divine gift, not based on our merit or our status or any such thing. But church 
is supposed to be the place where people can come in whatever situation or circumstance they find themselves and not be hindered. A place where the gifts are in operation for the deliverance of people just as it was on Pentecost. What is power? Power is defined as the right to govern or to determine. It implies possession of the ability to wield force, authority, or influence. Power also has its origin in the Greek word dunamis, spelled D-U-N-A-M-I-S. D-U-N-A-M-I-S. There are at least 120 examples of dunamis in the New Testament. Some other words that would be synonyms for dunamis would be power, strength, capacity, ability, potency, force, might, capability, authority, command, control, dominion, jurisdiction, influence, or sway. We have the power to sway people, influence them. Do you not know the things that you say about your church, your pastor, sways people? It influences people as to whether or not, not only do they not want to come to your church, they might not even want to accept Christ. Because they say, when I'm out here in the world, folk be talking about me out there. I don't need to come into a place where people are going to be talking about one another and running one another down because I've had enough of that out there. Without a doubt, if we are to live victoriously in these difficult times in which we find ourselves, we are sure enough, in order to be God's witnesses, we're going to have to have some real power. What's real power? It's the kind of power that endures the vicissitudes of life. Real power is the kind that causes you to stand for what is right when it would be easier to go along and get along. Real power is that thing that is counter-cultural, but yet it aligns itself with God's agenda, God's culture. What are you trying to say, Reverend? I'm talking about the kind of power that makes you stand up and act and speak out in the face of injustice and wrong, that makes you cry loud and spare not, to recognize real sin and call it out. Some of this stuff that we are so quick to call out it's stuff that we really could leave alone because there are bigger fish to fry. The kind of power with a capital P that makes you speak truth to power with a little p. Power that makes you like Christ and compels you to welcome all into God's house because you realize that it ain't your house. You didn't shed any blood for this house. And to understand that when God says all, that's what God means. All. It's us with the giant sifter. God said through his son Jesus to let the wheat and the tare grow together. He said in the end, I'm going to do the separating. Because you don't know wheat, wheat from tare. But I know. You know, the power like your mama and them had. I don't know what kind of mom and daddy you had, but I can tell you that all my dad had to do was to look at me. His look would make me cry. And if he ever had to speak to me, he didn't raise his voice. He didn't holler. But I understood exactly what he meant. And sometimes when I really had pressed it to the limit, I know y'all can't imagine I would do nothing like that, but when I pressed it to the limit, he would look at me and he would say, Cheryl, if you do blah, 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 I'll stomp a mud hole in you. I saw the mud hole and the mud gathering. I believed my daddy, his words had power. There used to be a time in the church when the mothers, I'm sure Sister Barbara remember it, remembers it from her Pentecostal background, when they would come to you and not even really say nothing to you. They'd just be clapping their hands and praying, Lord, oh yeah, Lord, and looking at you from head to toe. 
And if you came in there not right, you didn't sashay up to the front row. You sat back there towards the back and held your head down. And if you had never prayed before, you prayed then. Lord, please don't, don't let mother so-and-so come back here and say nothing to me. I'm going to get right after the day. <laughs> power. Power. They had the kind of power that just their presence in the building would make you rethink your actions. We understand how power works to some degree because when we flip a light switch, it's power that makes the lights come on. When we go and adjust the thermostat, it's power that causes that to be able to work. I'm sure this morning there are many things that William could tell us about physics and how power works in that, which is far beyond my comprehension. So I ain't put nothing in here about none of that. But we know that power works that way. If you got one of these new fashion automobiles, you know, when it has that turbo and a certain kind of torque to it, they say, you can press the accelerator and it'll go from zero to 60 just like that. If it hesitates, they say you got a hoopty or something that not new fagels like it is now. We know about storm powers, how storms come in and devastate and tear up things. And we know about word power. You know, we used to say sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a lie. Many of us are held captive right now by words that were said to us when we were little children that had hindered us from being all that God intended for us to be. So for just a moment before I go to my seat, let me talk a little more about this so what and now what. This power that we have has been around for over 2,000 years. It would not have lasted this long if it wasn't the real deal. It has been accessible to us and many of us have not tapped into it came down from on high, and it was promised to people who were like you and I in a broken state, and this power was sent to heal us and make us whole that we might be able to go forth to other humans and help them to become whole. There, as I told you, they were sitting, and it indicates that they were anticipating something from God. What has happened to us, church? When we have become so used to going to church that we just come not expecting. Well, Reverend Isaiah, how you know I'm not expecting? When you're expecting something, you got some pep in your step. When you're expecting something, you, you ever looked at let's make a deal when they're telling people to come on down? Before they ever, the price is right. Okay. Before they ever call their name. They just jump in And then when they call their name, they are anticipating winning whatever the prize is. They go down there, honey, when they get behind the podium, they can't hardly be still. Just waiting for their time to give whatever their price they think it's going to be. And once they tell what that price is, my God, if they win. If they win, they anticipating that just I won just getting up on the stage. So now I'm going to go for the big prize. They really be all over their stuff then. And if they make it to the final round where they get to spin that wheel, they don't go up there like this. They go up there with some vin and vigor. And when they get up there to that wheel, honey, they say, I'm going to make it, I'm going to go for the gusto. <laughs> Pull that thing down. And they're looking for it, anticipating that it's going to hit the right spot so they can be in line for the big deal of the day. How do I know we don't anticipate God showing up in our services? Because we come and we sit in the same place that we sit in every Sunday. We wait for somebody to prime us and pump us. All the people got to say is, come on down, when they say that. Yeah. We 
have a standing invitation. Do you not know that it is a blessing to be able to come to the house of the Lord? Do you not know that it's a blessing to be able to lift your voice and to lift your hands? Well, you know, I don't do all that. But there's a song that says, if I can't say a word, then I'll just wave my hand. Because God's been just that good. If God has done anything for you, it don't matter whether the preacher just simply say, praise the Lord, everybody. Or if they say, praise the Lord, everybody. You already know what it means and what God has done for you that warrants your praise. But here they were in this room, this upper room, where they had sat anticipating and expecting the promise. Scripture says that this divine gift came suddenly, and it sounded like the rush of a mighty wind. What would it be like for God to show up in our services and his spirit move in such a way? I don't know about you, but I can remember in my early days of salvation when the revivalists would come and the intention would be to stay for a week and revival would go to two weeks and three weeks and sometime a month. And even when I said I didn't have the money to go, or I said I was too tired to go. I found myself making my way into the house of the Lord for just perhaps the Lord would move on my behalf. I've been in services where the pure walls sweated with the presence of God. I've been in services where there was like a glory cloud. Things started to look foggy inside the sanctuary. God has so much more for us if we would come anticipating a move of God. But when you don't want, you don't get. His word says he inhabits the praises of his people. Now, John and Kathy, I do too, but I know John and Kathy have new grandchildren. They can't even really quite get their words together. But there ain't nothing y'all wouldn't do for me. I remember talking to Kathy before Alexander got here. And Kathy said, you know, Cheryl, it's just a shame. I got another shipment coming in. God has shipments for us, y'all. Things that are still laid up that he wants to give to green leaf. He has rewards that he wants to give us for our obedience. But we come in here like we doing God a favor. Where is the thanksgiving? Where is the praise? God, I thank you. You let me get here one more Sunday. <laughs> I know it could have been another way, God, and I don't know. This might be my last time. I don't know, but since I'm here today, God, I just want to tell you thank you. Does that mean everything in my life like I want it? No, God, but you deserve the praise, and I just want to tell you thank you. I just want to honor you today, God. And I believe, honey, like the saints of old used to say, if somebody would break out over here telling God thank you, then somebody right in there would begin to reminisce and remember what the Lord has done for them, and they would start to tell the Lord thank you. And then it would reach back there where Sister Connie is sitting, and it would make her hat be tilted to the side. And then it would run over here to the other side, and it would touch Sister Dixon, and it would come up to the front, and it would touch Sister Blackwell, and then it would get up here with the old singing and ministry and after a while be like the day of Pentecost when the spirit of God came in like a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire fell down upon each of their heads and it didn't say that just the intellectual ones because these tongues that they spoke with were not in it that they had been trained in but they said that the spirit laid down upon them like tongues of cloven fire they began to speak in languages that they had not learned. Now, they were all Galileans, and it was evident that they could understand one another if they just talked. So why was it necessary that they would be able to speak in tongues? I would submit to you that God did it so they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt. This thing was not done by any human hands, but that it came down from above, and it came with power to shift and to change things. The word of God goes on to let, let us know 
that you know that one I was talking about a few minutes ago, that Peter, that even when the false accusation came, because you know they're going to come, what's wrong with these folks? Why they acting like this? They must be drunk on new wine. That same Peter who at one time had been docile and was running, stood up with boldness. And he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that that the prophet Joel announced. When he said that in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. <laughs> that includes you and me, y'all. Every kind of people on your sons and your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Your young men going to see visions and your old men going to dream dreams. And when the time comes, I'm going to pour out my spirit on those who serve me. <laughs> if you want the spirit of God, you got to be willing to serve. It's time out for these museum saints. Come in the house of God and sit and look cute and pretty. You can't do nothing for God looking cute and pretty. I'm not saying that you got to be like me or anybody else. But every now and again, if you wear mascara, you ought to be willing to let it run down your face. Every now and then, when your coins are hurting and you're still trying to wear them heels, you still stand up. If you have to kick off a shoe and give God the glory, honor, and praise, that's do God's name. God goes on down and he says in Joel through the prophet, he says, and when those days arrive, he said, whoever calls out for help, he said, I'm going to save them. Who would not take advantage of that? If you hear today, the Lord says, my spirit is present. If you call out for help, I will save you. Peter went on to preach that morning. And when he did, the power of God fell and it transformed hearts and minds. And some 3,000 people were added to the church that very day. And the church began to grow exponentially. Now you wonder why the pews are like they are. Perhaps we need the Holy Ghost power to fall on us that we can be bold in our proclamation of what the Lord has done for us. All who believed were not fragmented, but they were together. Pastor one time preached and taught from here that they were with one accord. One won't trying to go this way and none try to go that way. They were on one accord. Let's get together, Greenleaf. Let's be unified. We might not understand everything and we might not like everything, but let's take it to the Lord in prayer. And let's be unified one with the other so that the Holy Spirit can fall in this place. I want to see signs and wonders. I want to see miracles. I know that the Lord is still growing limbs. I know that the Lord is still opening blinded eyes. I know that the Lord is still loosening stammering tongues. I know that cancer ain't too hard for God. I know that the Lord can do any and everything. The truth is, the issue ain't with God. It's with you and me. When all God's children get together, what a time. What a time. What a time. We know that when this transformation happens, it's going to make a difference in the earth. We saw that with the woman at the well. The woman at the well, the word don't even say she was filled with the Holy Spirit. But her testimony, she ran into the city. Dropped her water jars. And when she got into the city, she said, come see a man. Told me everything I ever did. And he loved me still. Our testimonies. Some of us act like we've been saved since we come out of the womb. Somebody be blessed by your testimony. 
Somebody will be blessed when you say, you know what? I have faltered. B.C. and A.C. What's that, Cheryl? Before Christ and after I received him. But I stand as a living testimony that he extended more grace. And that if I would just come and repent, he said he'll stand just to forgive. Now, he didn't promise your folk were going to forget. He didn't promise your folk were going to let it go. But I'm a living witness. Your life can't be such a mess that God can't pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. That God can't use you when everybody else said your life was over. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can tell it. I know what it is to have signed yourself off and God to remind you because he did it for me. When I was sitting on the steps of my apartment, I ain't going to tell y'all everything this morning, but I was in such a fix. I said to the Lord, Lord, this right here ain't going to come out so well. So let me tell you what my plan is for my mess. Since I made it, I got a plan. This is what I'm going to do, Lord. And even as I was telling God my plan, Holy Spirit was uttering up in me. A plan that I knew was different than what I was saying. And finally, one day, the Lord said to me, you act as though this caught me by surprise. He said, when I called you, I knew you would be in this place. He said, but if you'll stay with me, just stay in the room. He said, I'll take this byway, bring you back to the main highway. When I tell you God was faithful to do just that, and I wish... I could tell you that was the last time I messed up. But that won't so. I remember another time when I did what I thought I wanted to do. Got what I thought I had to have. And I was sitting there with it. And I was in a fix. That morning I was standing to the kitchen sink and I was washing the dishes. I don't know why the Lord is taking me this way. But as I was washing those dishes, the tears began to come down. And I can't even tell you what song I began to sing, but as I was singing, when I found myself, I was in the back of the house. And I had my hands extended in surrender to the Lord. And I was praying in the spirit. When my spirit man settled, the Lord said to me, this is not about you. He said, once again, the adversary has come for your anointing. Do you know the devil don't care nothing about your flesh? It's your anointing. The power that's in you to influence and shift and change things, not only for yourself, but for your families and for others. He said, he's come for that anointing. He said, but I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. You'll make it through this. Now, in my mind, I thought that meant tomorrow at the latest, the situation was going to be fixed. But I'm telling you, God didn't allow it to be fixed the next day. But God was faithful to that that God told me. My faith did not fail. There were many times that I came into this sanctuary. Heart burdened down. Heavy laden. <laughs> yeah, and some of you didn't know it because one good thing about God is that he will shield you. And won't allow people to see into your mess. Unless he gonna have them to pray. And not gossip. And so as I would be standing sometime in the choir and Bishop would say, I, 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 I want you to sing or I want you to learn this song. And two of the songs that took me through those dark times was he meant it for my good. He brought me out without a doubt. I knew that he would. Now I face no defeat. I'm strong when I'm weak. The devil meant it for bad, but I'm so glad God meant it for my good. <laughs> yes. And another song that he would have me to sing is My Times. The song said, if I was in control of my life, I think that I would have worked things out differently. There'd be no hurt, no pain, no disappointment, 
of these things, my life would be scot-free. But that just goes to show how little I know about leading and controlling my life. For you see, it took all these things to make the best of me. God is in control of my life. And my times, they're in the Lord's hands. And I'm a living witness that through those times, I know I'm not the only one in here that's been through some dark times, but in those times, didn't you learn how to trust him? Didn't you learn how to lean and depend upon God's word? Even when it looked like it wasn't going to work out, didn't you learn that God was faithful even when you won't? God was strong when you were weak. God did what God said God would do. And that was to never leave you nor forsake you. Friends might have walked away. God was still there. Friends might have got tired of hearing your story. But when you took it to the Lord in prayer, it might have been the 999th time, but God still heard your cry. Came to see about you. This morning, I believe the Lord wants us to make our way back to being this kind of church. The church that is walking and exercising the power, the divine power that has been given to her with the evidence of signs and wonders. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of coming to church as usual. I want to come to church and see Jesus. I don't care what you got on. I don't care how much your shoes cost, if they match your necklaces. I don't care about that. I want to see Jesus. And I want the Lord to manifest himself. I ain't got to know what my sister's problem is. But I want her to know, and I want to know, that whenever she leaves, she don't leave like she came in Jesus' name. Even if the situation ain't changed, she left with some hope. That if God be for her, there is no circumstance, situation, or person, or thing that can be against her. So in closing, this morning, the Lord has come to give us the gift of power. What is this gift of divine power? It is P for prayer and a promise. God has promised that if we pray, God will answer. According to 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, it says all the promises of God. To us as believers are yes, yes, and amen, meaning it is so. The Lord promises again to never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord promises that if we seek the kingdom and all of its righteousness, all things that we need will be given unto us, will be added. God has promised that no good thing would he withhold from us if we walk upright before God. God is a promise keeper. God cannot lie. <laughs> God won't lie. If God told you something, you just hold on to it. Because if God said it, God's going to do it. So don't stop praying. Not just with your words, but with your feet and with your hands. For God is faithful and God still answers prayer. Oh, God has given us other languages. On that day with the gift of power came the languages that they had not studied or learned. This gift was to demonstrate the power of God and to further solidify that this was no human feat. You know, when you're loved and loved unconditionally, we say it often here at Greenleaf. We are Greenleaf Christian Church, and we are determined to show you the love of God. We got to learn to really speak the love language. And the love language is more than what we say out of our mouths. It's what exudes from our heart and from our personality. The other night we were on a call and Sister Barbara Moran said, you have to smile when you're greeting people. Even though we're wearing masks, our eyes smile. Let people know that they're welcome to the house of the Lord. W, we have to be the witness. No one can witness what God has done for you like you can. Somebody said, you can't tell it. Let me tell it, what the Lord has done for me. It is not the pastor's responsibility to bring people into these pews. Sheep beget sheep. The pastor shepherds the sheep. So if there ain't nobody here, don't look at the pastor. All right, let's go on down to the next thing. I know y'all don't like that. All right, so 
Who are you going to intentionally witness to after today? Who are you going to tell this week about Jesus Christ and what God has done for you? E for empowerment. Once you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, then you are empowered to act. God don't need no more glowing light bulbs. He needs people to go out and shine the light that somebody might find their way. Prior to Pentecost, the disciples were fearful group of people. They were drowning in their own thoughts of failure, unforgiveness, and hopelessness. They were wallowing in the states they were in. Even though they had been told they were forgiven, it was hard for them to forgive themselves. But after that, the Holy Ghost came. Boldness came. Freedom came. Deliverance came. And I don't know about you, but when I leave this world, I want to leave empty. I want the Lord to say you used everything that I gave you for the upbuilding of the kingdom. And that ought to be all of our testimonies. And if we do that, guess what? God will add exponentially to this branch of Zion and to the body of Christ. And finally, rejection. Rejection don't sound like much of a gift, does it? But it is a gift because none of us want or like to be rejected. But if we want to be like Jesus, rejection is part of it. He was rejected and despised by men, laughed at, called crazy. But we have to realize that there are always going to be critics and critiques. There's going to be suffering in this thing. But in those times, we need to reach back and pull up some of those songs of old. Stomp won't help you through this. But if you reach back and grab, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living won't be in vain. If I can do my duties as a good person ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world that's uprought, if I can share love's message that the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Greenleaf, saints of God that are watching by way of live stream, God, on this Pentecost day, wants you to remember that he has given you power. If you don't have it, it's your fault. Because ain't nobody that can keep you from getting it. It's a free gift, sent from above, out of the reach of humanity. All you got to do is open yourself to receive it. And remember that it is only what you do for Christ that's going to last. That's the only thing that's going to last, y'all. So this morning, be reminded we have given pow- been given power. Prayer and promise, other languages, a witness, empowerment, And to know that we might be rejected. As we stand all over this building, we stand in need of the Holy Spirit. I reached out to Elder Bell the other day and I asked him, did he know this song? And I thought that was a song that I needed for the end of this message. But he's probably going to get me. (laughs) But the song I'm hearing in my spirit now is we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, maybe there's somebody in here who you know you're giving your life to the Lord. But your power source got a little, a little low. And it's not that the, anything is wrong with the power source. It's the connection. You know, sometimes when things aren't working, it's because it's not plugged in. So this morning, I, I, I want to invite you, if you've already given your life to the Lord, and maybe you have already received the Holy Spirit, but 
your battery is a little weak. I'm, I want to invite you to plug in this morning. For somebody who may not have received the Lord in the pardon of their sins, I'm talking to you out there. You can't have done anything that's so bad that the Lord will not receive you into himself. Doesn't matter if you're behind prison bars for life. God can still save you. God still wants to save you. And even in that place, God can give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And power that will enable you to stand in the midst of where you are. This morning, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word today. God, we pray that it has fallen on good soil. And even if we don't see the harvest of it, God, we're believing you that it's going to bring forth much fruit. We thank you for the ability to be able to do it in you, Christ Jesus. We need the, you may be seated, power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit send your anointing. Let it fall down. Fall down. Fall down fresh on me as we're preparing to you can keep going you can keep singing as we're preparing now to partake in the Lord's Supper here at our Father's table the one he provided for us through the death of his son, Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed. And I want to ask you this morning if you would just hold on to your elements until I have finished the words of institution. And then we will eat together, okay? At this point, the Lord took the loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they had completed the supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And he is coming again. May he find us working and executing with power. Let us now partake of our elements. Thank God for the body of Christ Jesus, for the blood never loses its power. Well, Greenleaf, the Lord has brought us yet to the end of another worship experience. And I don't know about you, but I ain't going to leave here like I came. If I came ready to praise the Lord, I'm even the more so ready now. So as we stand all over this sanctuary to prepare to depart from this place. We've entered to worship, 
Now we're going to depart this earth. It's a lot of work out there to be done, and we have been equipped to do it. I, I want to think, you know, these masks keep us from knowing who people are. But I want to think that, is that Apostle uh, Ravonda? Who is this lady right here? Right here with the burgundy on. That's not Apostle Ravonda. But you favor her about the eyes. But we are glad that you came to worship with us this morning, not only you, but the sister with the little boy. I don't know about you all, but when I see little children enter into the sanctuary, it gives me hope for this place. It gives me hope for Greenleaf because you know what? Ain't many of us can bring no more. And so when people come and bring their little ones, we are blessed by it. So my sister, we're so glad that you saw fit to come and worship with us today and to bring your little boy and to hear his little voice coming out in the audience. I know that my grandson would have probably been doing more than that. So bless God. It's all right. Amen. Amen. With uplifted hands, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we should ask or think, according to the power that operates within us, to the only wise God be their glory, dominion, and majesty henceforth, now, and forevermore. And we sing with the choir. Lord, Lord, Jesus, the Calvary. Lord, 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 Lord,